I'm going to attempt to get the Platinum Trophy for Dark Souls. In order to do that, I'll need to basically kill every boss, collect all the different types of spells, collect a ton of weapons, and play through the game a total of two and a half times to be able to get certain trophies. Not only will this be challenging because it's Dark Souls, but it'll also be a huge grind. Sounds fun. Let's get started. Like any Dark Souls game, we first have to create our character. For this playthrough, my build was going to be strength based because I just wanted to have a giant weapon eventually. My build won't actually matter too much though as it will be all over the place because I'll have to invest in faith and intelligence in order to join some of these covenants later on for separate trophies. I create my character Oppie Jaime and we start the game. Like all great RPGs, we start off in a prison and we fight our way through some very basic enemies until we come across our first bonfire. Once we light the bonfire, our first trophy was down and there was no turning back now. Oh, we lit a bonfire. Hey, look at that. Hey, hey, one step closer. Hey. I still needed to make my way through this prison, and as I do, I come across this dude who's totally just chillin' and definitely not dying. He speaks to me in cryptic sentences and hands me an Estus Flask, which is what you use to heal throughout the game. What a bro. I've been out of my cell for no more than 5 minutes and I've already made a new best friend. Not everyone here is cool though, as now I need to fight my first boss of the game. Now this is not my first time ever playing Dark Souls, so this double cheeked up enemy was no issue for me. In the butt, in the butt. Yes. The butt stabs. The butt stabs. With Thick Boy defeated, we catch a ride with a bird to reach Lordran, which is where we'll be spending the rest of the game and also where I will be slowly losing my mind. All right, we've done it. We did some butt stabs and we've reached Lordran. This area we're in now is Firelink Shrine, which is basically the home base for the whole entire game. I talk with some of the locals here and join the Way of the White Covenant for a trophy. This was the first covenant of many I'd have to be joining, not only for trophies, but for the various spells and miracles that they sell. I make my way through the first couple of areas, killing some very basic enemies, some knights, and even a boss. Come on, yes! <laughs> yeah. Until I reach this dragon on a bridge. Now, for anyone that's played Dark Souls before, you know what's coming next. I shoot at this dragon's tail with a bow for a good 10 minutes until his tail comes off, and I'm rewarded with a Drake Sword. This sword alone will carry me through the beginning part of the game until I can use this Black Knight Great Sword that drops off a knight for me not 10 minutes later. Chill, 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 chill. Oh my god, it's done. Hey! A Black Knight Greatsword! Yeah! My goal was to ring two bells to progress through the game, and the first one was being guarded by the next boss, which is a duo of two gargoyles. I summon in the best video game bro of all time, Solaire, to help me fight the gargoyles. I do this because having him rewards me with sunlight medals, a very rare currency that I'll need for later on. With Solaire by my side, this boss was a piece of cake. Get him, Solaire. One gargoyle down, one more to go. Solaire, survive. Survive. Oh my god, look at that damage. Oh my god, the damage. Hey, good job, dude. And that's exactly what we needed. We needed that sunlight medal from Solaire. <laughs> yes, praise the sun. With the two gargoyles down, I climb the tower and I ring the first bell. Feels good to make some progress. There we go. We got the ring the bell trophy for the undead church. Look at us blazing through. Those gargoyles never stood a chance. Now, for the next couple of hours, my time was spent killing more bosses, or dying to them, and grinding souls in this forest by letting enemies bounce off my head into the abyss below. Rinse and repeat. Nice! <laughs> no way. Not only is it hilarious, but it is pretty useful for some free souls. 
I did all this grinding to buy different spells and pyromancies from various merchants. Again, I'll need all these spells, pyromancies, and miracles for the platinum. Eventually, I made my way through everyone's favorite area of the game, Blight Town. It's just such a warm and inviting place. How could you not love it here? All right. No, 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 that's cool. No, that's cool. I didn't want to. I didn't want. I didn't want to live anyways. No, that's fine. At the end of this nightmare is Quaylag. She was guarding the second bell I needed to ring. Does she know who she's messing with? I mean, come on. I made it through Blight Town. Nothing was gonna stop me. What? Oh my god. <laughs> no, dude. Okay, so she stopped me. But next time, she wasn't so lucky. Is this it? There we go. GG. Goodbye, spider. <laughs> You're dead. With Quaylag down, the bell was rung, and we were rewarded with another trophy. I then join another covenant while down in the spider caves and fight the ceaseless discharge boss to unlock an area for later on. Now, there's a way to cheese this boss, but I didn't know it at this time, so I fought him the hard way. Don't be like me. <laughs> no way. Yes. Yes. Victory. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. Now I had to make it through Sen's Fortress, an area full of snakes with swords, snakes with lightning, swinging blades, balls of death, and did I mention snakes? Seriously, I hate this area so much, man. Once I made it past this hellhole, my reward at the end was a giant boss fight. Literally, the, the, the boss is a giant. Now, don't let his size scare you though. His attacks are easily telegraphed and he's super slow. Kill him, kill him, do it. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for throwing the fireballs. You jerk. Let's get the hell out of here, guys. Once the giant is down, I'm picked up by some random demon goblin things, and I'm flown to the most iconic city of all of Dark Souls, Anor Londo. Now, as iconic as Anor Londo is, it's full of all sorts of bullshit. I'm talking about fights on very skinny rafters against ninjas, gargoyles, giants, and these dumb silver knights. The fun never stops in Anor Londo. This place does have one of my favorite characters in the game though, the giant blacksmith. He's a total bro, and we will be visiting him a lot later on. Now, I know I just mentioned all the BS and Orlando can be, but none of these things compared to the final boss of this area, Ornstein and Smo. This fight is one of the most iconic fights in all of Dark Souls and personally one of my favorites. With all that being said, these guys are still huge jerks. Absolutely destroyed. I don't know if this big sword is going to be helping. <laughs> this big sword, it swings so slow, dude. Stop, Ornstein. Stop it. Stop flying at me like a psycho. Get out of here. Oh my god, Ornstein. No, dude. Ornstein, you are such a jerk, man. Okay, Hornstein coming at me live here. Oh, almost got him. Nice! Smo down. Smo is down. Nice. Nice, good damage. Oh, no way. Oh my god, I'm 1 HP in a dream. I cannot believe you just hit me right there. Oh. Come on. Yes. Yes. 1 HP in a dream. Oh, man. <laughs>
Dude, look at my health right now. I seriously have one HP. Oh my god, yes. Yes. With the dynamic duo down, we meet Princess Mommy Milker's Guinevere, and she grants us the Lord Vessel, which means we get a trophy, but more importantly, we can fast travel now. I also enter her covenant for another trophy. Now I make my way into the painted world, and the goal here was just to kill the boss at the end. But while I'm here, I spent about an hour killing these crow things over and over again to get a certain drop to join a later covenant. Once my grind was complete, we fight Priscilla, which after coming off the insanity that was Ornstein and Smo, is a total walk in the park. I cut off her tail for a weapon, and I finish her off first try. I made my way back to the forest area where I had grinded souls previously, and this time I joined another covenant for a different trophy by talking to a talking cat. This game is kind of weird. Now, I gotta say, I hate this next boss. Not because it's hard, but because it's a freaking dog. Miyazaki, what the hell is wrong with you? Why are you making me kill a dog, man? Sit, please. I don't want to have to kill a dog. Why does this game make me kill dogs? Why do I always gotta kill dogs in all these games? Every game I play, I gotta kill a freaking dog. I love dogs. Oh, he's limping. Oh my God. I forgot he does that. Oh, he's barely. Oh my gosh. Well, that's sad. This game sucks. I hate this game. It's a dumb, stupid game. Sif drops a ring that allows me to enter an area named the Abyss. Here we fight one of the more challenging bosses in the game. The Four Kings. The fight starts off with one enemy to fight, but as time goes on, more spawn in if you aren't quick enough to kill them. For my first playthrough, my strategy was just to equip Havel's armor set and just try to like face tank my way through. It's not the most graceful way to fight them, but it is pretty effective. Yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, Havel's armor set. Thank you for existing. Defeat the Four Kings. With the four kings down, we meet Kath and join his covenant for a trophy. Kath explains to me that I need the souls of three particular bosses to unlock the door to the final boss. So I set out to fight those three bosses. The first of the three bosses I was going for was Nido, and to make my way to them, first I had to go through the catacombs. I slice my way through a million skeletons, making sure to use a divine weapon here, or else the skeletons would respawn, and that would be not cool. In the catacombs, there is a grave that you can lay in, and after about maybe 15 seconds of laying there, it actually transports me to where Nido is resting. Here, I can join their covenant for a trophy. I'll be back here in a little bit to fight this jerk, but for now, I continue in the catacombs. At the end of the catacombs, I try and dodge these spinning skeleton wheels. I hate these things. I hate these things so much. And make my way into this area's boss room. It's funny how the catacombs are one of the worst parts of the game, but the boss at the end is an absolute joke. I wildly swing my sword around and I kill the boss in literally less than a minute of the fight starting. Imagine if all the bosses were this easy. easy. <laughs> it's so easy, dude. Now it was time for the real worst area of the game. The Tomb of Giants. Everything in here is pitch black, unless you have a lantern or a spell that can light the way. Here I run into Patches, who is, for lack of a better word, kind of a dick. And he kicks me down into a hole. Damn you, Patches. It works out for me though, because here we find a woman that needs me to help kill her bodyguards who have gone crazy down in the darkness. After slaying these two poor souls, she rewards me with another miracle and we are one step closer to the trophy for having all the miracles. While I'm down here fighting all sorts of enemies, one of the knights drops one of the rarest and best weapons in the game, the Black Knight Halberd. This weapon will literally carry me through the whole rest of the Platinum, and I've never gotten the chance to use it before, so from here on out, it was my main weapon of choice. Oh my god, Black Knight Halberd, dude. No way did I just get that off of this guy. On my way to the boss, a phantom invades me, and I need to kill him so that I can get his weapon for a trophy. This should be simple enough. There was no way I could mess this up. Uh. 
Dude, no way. I need his items. Well, that sucks, but it's fine. I have to play through the game again anyways, so we'll get to him next time, hopefully. Now it was time to fight Nito. This fight gave me so much trouble initially. The problem is he's just surrounded by a ton of skeletons. I died quite a few times here. The pain was very real. Eventually I figured out if I just stayed in the beginning area where the fight begins, Nito wouldn't summon that many skeletons. So I would take out his initial three skeletons that spawned and just focus on him. And it made the fight much more bearable. Nice. All right, me and you, mono y mono. Yeah, no thanks. Get a little slice in there, huh? Uh. Uh. Yeah. Not today, Nito. Get out of here. You're dead. Thank God. Nito is finally done. <laughs> With Nito down, I made my way back to An Orlando and joined a covenant by using those items that we farmed earlier from those crow enemies in the painted world. This gives me access to another spell that I'll need for a trophy. Now it was time to fight Gwendolyn. This boss is honestly super simple. All you have to do is just run at them and hide behind pillars while they shoot things at you. And then you get a couple of attacks in while they run away. Rinse and repeat until they're dead. This is a pretty easy boss fight. After Gwendolyn was another boss fight, Seath the Scaleless. A giant dragon that can curse you with his crystal attacks. I needed to not only kill Seath, but I had to also cut off his tail for a weapon. Seath can be a tricky fight, but honestly the hardest part of the fight was just running around trying to hit his tail. He would just keep moving around in circles and just make it really hard on me. There we go. There it is. Always oh, slamming. Always oh, pissed. Are you done? You still slamming? Oh my god. Dude, chill out. Just let me kill you. Jesus. Yes. There we go. Finally. <laughs> the tail was harder than the boss. All right, he's defeated. Another trophy down. With Seath down, a mini boss spawns in this area, and after the mini boss is defeated, he drops the last sorcery I need to get the trophy to have all of the sorceries. All right, Wisdom of a Sage acquired all the sorceries. Whew. One collectible down. I need to make a quick detour deep into Ash Lake to join another covenant. I run past a giant hydra and I come across this dragon who's just chilling here. Upon talking with him, I join his covenant for a trophy. I then cut off his tail for a weapon. Maybe I'm the bad guy. He doesn't even care. We just cut off his tail, doesn't even care. Yo, dude, your tail's cut off. Thanks for the weapon. Now it was time for everyone's favorite boss of the game, the Bed of Chaos. I don't have much to say about this fight, except it just kind of sucks. You have to kill three quote unquote hearts, and I was able to get the ones on the sides, no problem. The issue was getting to the last middle one. Every time I tried to get to this jerk, it would just swipe me off the ledge or I'd fall to my death. Such a pain. I missed the jump again, dude. Oh my god. I oh my god, I'm such an idiot. I roll I keep rolling off the edge. Go, 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 go. No. Oh my god. He's just. Oh man, I was right there. The finish line. Come on. Come on. Go, 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 go. Go! Roll for your freaking life. Kill it. Thank god. You suck. 
You suck, you stupid bed of chaos. Oh my god, it's finally over. This thing blows. With the bed of chaos defeated, I had every soul I needed to make my way to the final boss. But before I beat the game, I had a ton of grinding to do. First, I needed to grind these black knights until I got all of their weapon drops. I then needed to farm all these silver knights for their weapons. After those two grinds were done, I then needed to farm these stone giants for their weapons. With all these grinds combined, this took a couple of hours of just killing the same enemies over and over again to get their weapons. Now the last weapon I needed, the Chandler's Trident, is an extremely rare item drop that only drops from mages in this area. I had read beforehand of people grinding for hours upon hours and maybe even days just to get this item which I needed for the Platinum. Now, I'm no stranger to grinding in games, you guys know that. So I settled in, got Netflix ready, and prepared myself for the long haul. And on my first attempt, this happened. Oh my god, I cannot believe I got that. That's literally my first try. Oh, dude. Oh my god, dude. That could have been hours of grinding. Oh, that's a good, that's a feels good, man. That is a feels good. The grind doesn't stop there though. I now need to upgrade certain types of weapons to their max so that I can use the boss souls I've acquired to make boss weapons. This is why the plat takes almost three playthroughs as sometimes you'll need multiple of the same boss's souls to make different weapons, meaning I'd have to kill them again in another playthrough. To make a long story short, upgrading these weapons was a huge grind, but along the way I got multiple trophies for maxing out certain elemental weapon types, which involves farming or buying rare materials. With that done, the last grind I needed to complete was killing these bugs here over and over again until I got 10 total sunlight medals. Now, I already got some of these before for fighting with Solaire in the gargoyle fight, but even with those I already acquired, I still needed a total of seven more. So this grind probably took me another hour or so of just mindlessly killing these bugs. Please, give me a sunlight medal. Give me a sunlight medal. I hate you. Give me a sunlight medal. Oh my god. Please. Oh. Yes. Yes. Oh, thank god my grind is over with. Holy crap. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, now it was time to beat this game for the first time. All I needed to do was beat Gwyn and light the bonfire for one of the endings. Should be pretty simple, right? Apparently not for me. No! Oh my god. Nice. There it is. Uh-huh. Stay down. Here we are. Oh, God. It feels so good. Let's get one more stab on him. Yes. All right. It's time to beat the game for the first time for this platinum run. Let's light the bonfire. Link the fire. Okay. To link the fire. First playthrough done. Dark Souls remastered. Oh, I love this game so much. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Now in New Game Plus, I basically just needed to beat the game again while completing a short list of tasks for trophies. First, I used my sunlight medals I farmed here at this statue to join the last covenant and to get some miracles. I then made it all the way back down to Blight Town to find this pyromancy vendor that I didn't have in my first playthrough. She sells the rest of the pyromancies I need for a trophy, but there is one one problem. In order to get the very last one I need, I can either do a very long, extensive quest for her, or I could just kill her. After she dies, we get the last pyromancy for the trophy. I also need to make it back to Nito and join his covenant one last time while offering him these items called Eyes of Death. After giving 10 of them, I gained the last miracle for a trophy. 
Like I mentioned before, my main focus was killing certain bosses so that I can gain their souls to craft the rest of their boss weapons. Most of these bosses the second time through were a piece of cake. Ornstein and Smo were rough, as always. But other than them, the only boss I had issues with were the Four Kings. The Havel armor strategy didn't work on this harder difficulty, so I went the complete opposite end of the spectrum and decided to just get naked and dodge their attacks. Honestly, I much preferred the fight this way, and after enough trial and error, I made it past this roadblock. I also made sure to kill Paladin Leroy while on the ground this time, and finally got his weapon. And when it came to the Bed of Chaos, I used a cheese strat that I had never used before, but honestly, I'm gonna use this from here on out whenever I fight this stupid boss. After collecting the last of the super rare crafting materials, I was able to max out all of the rest of the elemental weapons for a ton of trophies. And I crafted every boss weapon I could up to this point. Now I need to beat the game for a second time and choose the other ending. This time I did a little bit better overall against Gwyn and parried him until he was finally done for good. Here we go. Get out of here. Yes! We walk away from the bonfire and bring in the Age of Darkness to get our second to last trophy. There it is, the Dark Lord. The second ending to Dark Souls. We're so close to the Platinum now, all I gotta do is just unfortunately kill the dog one more time. And the third playthrough was super simple. First, I had to kill Sif for a third time which is the only boss, by the way, that needs three kills. Seriously, Miyazaki, what is wrong with you? What do you have against dogs? I grab Sif's soul and make a mad dash to the giant in Anne Orlando. Once I'm here, I just need to use Gwyn and Sif's souls to make the last of the boss weapons, and the platinum was mine. And there it is, Knight's Honor, the last trophy of Dark Souls, which means we have the platinum. The Dark Soul. Oh my god. Man, what a grind, dude. Uh, but it's done, guys. We did it. Dark Souls Platinum. Let's freaking go. And so my journey was complete and Dark Souls Platinum was in the bag. I love the Souls games so much and I had a lot of fun with this despite the grind. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and consider subscribing for more content. Thank you so much for watching.